Good evening, sir. All right. Good evening, Jimmy. Good evening. How are you doing? I'm good. All right. Good to hear. Good to hear. All right. All right. So we're kind of we're continuing with trigonometry. Oh, before we start, by the way, did you try the 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 Microsoft that I sent you? Did you try to update Microsoft yesterday? No, I didn't get to yet. Oh, you didn't get a chance to. All right. All right, so I sent it to you so you can try to update Microsoft. But when you extract the file, the password, it's going to ask for a password, and the password is 123. All right? All right. All right. All right, so we're continuing today with trigonometry. We only have two aspects of trigonometry to do. But before we get into those two aspects, just to, you know, keep our memories fresh. We have to convert to radians. They will have to solve equations involving radians and finding maximum and minimum points of trigonometric functions. But before we do that, just to refresh our memory, I'm going to ask you to solve, you know, just a couple equations just to refresh our memory. So I allow you to share your screen. Or you can share your screen, Jamie. So I want you to solve the equation. Sorry, four sine x plus two is equal to zero. And this is where x is between zero and 360 degrees. Yeah. All right, very good. Remember, we don't take that. We, we need to draw the circle to imagine which, to see which quadrant we're in. Sign is negative in which two quadrant? In this one. E A S T, yeah. So negative in the bottom two quadrants, all right? So the angle that we get there, that's the first quadrant. Oh, no, that's not it. Oh, we get the angle in the third and the fourth quadrant. Third and the fourth? We... So it's 13 normally, so... Here's 180 plus. 180 plus, very good. Third quadrant is 180 plus. Six is 210, good. Or oh, you get the angle in the fourth quadrant. 360 minus mine very good 360 minus the first the 30 good all right very good and those are the two answers lovely x is 210 and 330 all right 
Let's get into a, a, a harder one now. So you can go to the next page. Two sine square X plus five sine X equal three. I can see that's a five, that's okay. Five sine X equal three, where X is between zero and 360 degrees. You don't need to use that identity. We already have everything in terms of sign. Just put them in the cities. So what if you call sine x some variable? Call sine x j for Jamie. So let sine x equal j. So what would the equation become now? Two j square. Good. So solve it now. Signs are different. The bigger number get the positive. So for it to be 2j squared, it has to be 2j and j. All right, now I think the plus goes with the J and the minus go with the 2J. All right, and the bigger number is? So we know it's three and one, but where are the three gonna go? Wouldn't be the three there. Yep, that's it. Very good, but J was sine X, good. So solving sine X is a half. Can sine X be negative three? Is there a rule against that? I can't remember. 
All right, so remember we said sine x has to be between one and negative one. So sine x is always between one and negative one. That goes for sine and tan. All right, so you can write that down that sine x is always between one and negative one. So that mean the part that says sine x equal negative three, you're gonna tell them that part is not valid because the sine of no angle cannot be negative three. You can tell them that part here, not valid. Nice, invalid, yeah. Very good, those are the two answers, X being 30 and 150. Very good, very good, Jamie. All right, nice. All right, so one more question for the warm up, and then we'll get into today's concept. So cos two X is equal to minus one divided by the square root of two. And part A is I want you to solve this if X is between zero and 360 degrees. And part B is if I want you to solve it between zero and 180 degrees. The cos inverse one over root two, 45, so 45 degrees. But we're in which quadrant? Good.
All right. Very good. So it'll be part B answer now. Both of these angles are the same run The so. same, very good, yeah. You're right, the same thing, very good. Just checking if you spot on right there, very good. All right, I know I said one more, but I just want to see you to do one involving a type like this now. So here's this question now for me, Jamie. Find all the values of X. where x is between 0 and 6, for which all right, and the equation now is 16 sine in bracket x minus x over 2 minus 1. Sixteen sine bracket x over 2. Then you subtract one. Yeah, close the bracket. That's equal to 15. Yeah. X is between zero and six, yes. All right, no, so that's not what we do. What we do first, first thing we need to do is get rid of the 16. So divide both sides by the 16. Oh, by the way, it should be between zero and 600 degrees. All right, yeah, 600 degrees. That should have been 600 up there. Yeah, not the typical 360, 600, yeah.
Is it 180 minus 141? No, it's 180 minus the 69.64. And remember that's X over two minus one. Right, but look, notice you know, it says if 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 you're between zero and six hundred degrees, remember what I say? You can spin around the circle how many more times? Very good. Add 360 to the answers. Very good. I'm just adding to these or these two, those two. No, so you don't need to write x over two minus one. Just add the answer that you get, you're just gonna add 360 to it. Right. All right, very good, Jamie. So now just write out all four answers on the paper. They love to see it that way. All right. Very good. Very good, Jamie. Very good. Nice. All right. All right. So now we can get into the topic for today. All right, those are some good warm-up questions, right? So you feel ready for today now, right? Sure. All right, great. All right, now, oh, by the way, I just wanted to show you why you just can add 360. So for example, at the sign of 30, you put in the calculator, it's a half. Even once you add 360 to the angle, it's still gonna be the same thing. You just spin around in the circle one more time, but you end up back at the same position. All right, so it wouldn't be the x over 2 minus 1, but the final answer that you get, you add 360 to it. Always, all right? Mm -hmm. All right. So now let's look at, let's look at now radians. That's what we're going to go to, all right? Now, how they discovered this radian principle was Back then, we had a lot of what they call unit circles, all right? Unit circle. And a unit, what does the word unit mean, Jamie? A um, base. Unit. A singular. Single, very good, single, all right? So in, in, in terms of mathematics, we say one, all right? One, so in terms of, so you did physics in CSEC? Yeah, as well as with base. All right, yeah, that's why I said base, very good. So when we talk about units, sometimes they'll define some stuff in physics and they'll tell you that maybe one Newton and they tell you that the unit of Newton is maybe they say one kilogram 
meter per second square or something like that, right? Listen. Yeah, one, notice it's one and they said that's the unit. So unit is one. So what they did is, how they came up with this radian idea is they drew a circle and they say, well, let's consider a unit circle first. And they said, this is the unit circle and the unit circle would therefore have a radius of one. Now, what they realized was that, well, the perimeter of the circle, perimeter of a circle is what? It's the same as the circumference. All right, what's the, for, what's the formula? Two pi r. Two pi r, very good, two pi r. So realize for a unit circle, the perimeter would just be two pi, all right? So the perimeter would just be two pi. But they said that if the perimeter is two pi, and if you start from this point, and you're one unit, if you're just one unit away from the center, so you start at this point, and you travel, two pi around to end up at this position, realize that the angle would be 360 degrees. So it made a complete revolution around. But that 360 degrees, right? We're saying that the 360 degrees that you travel, it's approximately two pi. But the two pi is just the distance that you traveled around the circle, it's two pi units, right? Yes, but this two pi units, what we're gonna call it is radians. And so then when we divide both sides by two, this is when they're just saying that if somebody travels 180 degrees, what they travel approximately is pi radians, all right? And that's all they, that's, that's all they did to come up with this formula. All right, so sometimes maybe you want measurement in terms of an angle, or maybe you want measurement in terms of unit distance. Radians is just a measure of unit distance. So that's how they say 180 degrees is pi radians. So now, of course, they'll ask us questions like maybe they'll say convert 144 degrees to radians. So what we always start with is what we know. We know that 180 degrees is equal to one radian, right? Or pi radian, sorry, one pi radians. So then to convert 144 degrees, in chemistry, a lot of teachers draw the arrow and put X, right? Yes, and then you'd cross multiply. So you'd end up say X times 180, is 144, and so x is just divided by 180, 144 over 180. And you can simplify 144 over 180. I think four into this goes, four into this goes three. And let me just put that in the calculator. 144 over 180, what's that when you simplify it? It's four over five. Four over five? Four over five, all right, four over five. All right, this is 144 pi. So it works out to be four pi over five radians. And that's it, all right? So in general, Jamie, the basic measurement that they typically use, typically these are the ones that we need to remember, is zero, 30, 45, 60, 90, 180, and 360. All right, so no longer are they gonna give us equation. Well, they can, but they rarely ever do it. Give us equation to solve and ask you for the answer in degrees. Typically, they're gonna ask you for it in radians. So in radians, zero degrees is going to be zero, same way. 30 degrees is pi by 6, 45 is pi by 4, 60 degrees is pi over 3, pi by 3, 90 is pi by 2, 180 is pi, and 360 is 2 pi. And those are the units in 
radians. So now I'm going to ask you to convert some for me in radians. All right, so you can share your screen. So I want you to convert 135 degrees to radians. All right, very good. Three pi over four radians. All right, two more. Now, look at this one right here. Uh, convert 215 degrees to radians. Yeah, two one five over one eight is good. All right, very good. 43 over 36 pi for the pi. Yeah. All right. Very good, Jamie. Very good. So now that we know what is radians, now you're able to solve equations involving radians now. So now I'm going to give you some more questions to solve now, but now you're going to do it involving radian. Wait, wait, wait. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, there is one more thing. So I'm just going to share before I give you some question to do. So there's one last thing, Jamie, and this is what's known as simple proof. These are known as simple proof questions. So I remember you started to write down some identity, which is good. There are two identity that you must remember. Sine square x plus cos square x is equal to one. And what's the next identity, Jamie? One more, Pythagoras. Uh, I can't remember it. All right, let me give you a hint, tan. Equal tan x is? Sin x over cos x. Very good, sin x over cos x. You see these two identity? are powerful. So these two identities are powerful for when we're given now some simple questions to prove. All right, these are just simple proofs. All right, it's always gonna be very, very, very simple, but the only way we can do it is if we remember the identity. All right, so they usually only work like three marks. So it's very simple to show you. So like the first one, it says, Show that tan A plus sin A times tan A minus sin A is tan square A times sine square A. So we're going to do this first one together. Then I'm going to have you do the second. 
and the third and the fourth. All right? So the first one here, we have tan A. We have tan A plus sine A, and that's multiplied by tan A minus sine A. I need to show that it's going to be the same as tan square A sine square A. Now, whenever we're doing these proofs, Jamie, always prove from left to right. So you need to prove that the left side of the equation is the same as the right side. So we, we write down LHS. LHS means left-hand side. Now, Jamie, do you remember difference of two square? A square minus B square is what? A minus B times A plus B, right? Yes, so in this case, realize that this is just, can I write down that this left side, the tan A plus sine, tan A plus sine A times tan A minus sine A. I realize that is just the difference of two square and I can write it as tan square A minus sine square A. Can I do that? Yeah, I don't see why not. Nice. So look at this now, but we need to show that it's gonna be tan square A times sine square A, not subtract. So look at this now. All right, so notice that, wait a minute, we're gonna end up with a lot of problems, but no problem, look at this. Tan, we said that tan is sine over cos. So this is going to be sine square A over cos square A minus sine square A, right? Yes, now we can put this over one. And we remember from, you know, as early as prep school days, we can write two fractions to one common denominator. The common denominator would be cos square A. And cos square A into sine square A goes one time. So one times sine square A is just sine square A minus one into cos square A. That is just cos square A, right? Agree with that? Oh. Uh. One into cos square A. Think of it. Oh, if yes, cos, sir, sir. Yeah. If one was 15, one into 15 would just go 15 times, right? Yes, so this now, that's just sine square A times cos square A. Now look at this, Jamie. In the numerator, we can factor out sine square A. And factoring out sine square A, we're going to have one minus cos square A left back from the numerator. Do you agree with that? Yes, sir. But one minus cos square A is what? That's Which? sine. Sine square, yeah man, say it, sine square A. So realize we have sine square A times sine square A over cos square A. Now, Jamie, look what I'm gonna do. Instead of putting it over cos square, all over cos square A, I'm gonna just write the first part over cos square A. Because think about it this way. Let me put a fraction here. If I told you you have 4 times 3 over 5, that's just 12 over 5. But I could write that this is also 4 over 5 times 3. Couldn't I do that? Because 3 is just 3 over 1, right? Yes, sir. That would still be 12 over 5. By doing it that way, what I'm saying then is that this sine square over cos square, that's going to be over tan square A times our sine square A. And that proves it. Easy, don't it? Yes, We're just playing around with what we know to prove those identity. So now you're going to try the second one for me. So you can share your screen. All right, this question here, it says prove that I don't want to start with that one. Sine A minus cos A times, so put a bracket now, bracket around the sine A cos A. And then this have tan plus one over tan A in the next bracket. 
tan A plus one over tan A. Close the bracket. Equal to one over cos A minus one over sine A. Yep. Go ahead and do that for me. Good. Get rid of get rid of the tan. Very good. So what about that tan? Why not change that tan right there? One over tan a. They have one over sine over cos. But one over sine over cos is what? Why not just write cos A over sine A? Yes, yeah. All right, so keep on going. Simplify that for me now. You sure you want to write it as one fraction already? We don't multiply them out yet. Remember, you have a sign A minus cos A in front. Oh, you get that. I don't understand. You multiply the sine times. Remember, sine A is really sine A over 1. So sine A times sine A would be sine squared. Or in the denominator of a sine A. Yeah. It would just be sine square over cos A. Good. Yeah. Good science cancel, yeah. That's just plus cos A. Mm -hmm. Good, let me see what you're gonna do now. No, you can write it as one fraction.
Wait, remember cos A is really cos A over one, and that's really sine A over one. So cos A into that would leave sine A. Wouldn't it be sine A cos A? Why is there a minus in between the sine A cos A? Yeah. Very good, Jamie. You notice that, of course, the sine and cos a cancel each other. You're almost finished, man. What can you do right here? I can cancel. The... No, we can't cancel like that. Look at it this way. Let me give you a fraction to give you a hint. Look at this. If I were to tell you how. 7 plus 5 all over 4. Can you write that as 7 over 5 plus 5 over 4? 7 over 4 plus 5 over 4? Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. All right, that's sine square A over cos A. All right, that should have been one. I'm wondering why is it sine square? Let me go back and check now because if this should have been canceled out, it should have been one. Let me see. Sine A. So change time, that's sine over cos. That's cos over sine, that's good. Sine time, this one times this one is sine A, sine square, that's good. That is sine. This time, this is just plus cos A. And cos A times tan A, cos A times that the cos cancel to just get minus sine. Then, that's minus cos square over sine, good. And then to write as one fraction, the denominator is cos a sine a. Oh, I see the issue. All right, the fraction part is the issue, Jamie. Now I see it. Notice down here, cos a into cos a sine a. That would leave sine a, sine a times sine square is sine cube. Then cos A over one into cos A sine A, that would leave the same cos A sine A. But then cos A sine A times cos A, that would give sine A cos square A. 
So no following. All right, no. In look, cos a put it over one. Put the fraction button over one. This yeah, one. So the, yeah, so cos a put over one. So one into that denominator would leave what? The whole cos a sine a, right? Yes, sir. And if you multiply cos a sine a times cos a, what would you get? Cos square a. Cos a square, but yeah, sine a. Cos a should be cos square. That should be right there, should have had a square. So the next part also should have had? Sine square. Sine square, yeah. All right, so just take off the uh, every part after that equal a square it so we can fix that up. All right, so now we're good so far. All right, so now we need to, let's see what we can factor out for it to simplify to be this from the first two terms All right, now we're gonna do some rearranging, Jamie. We're gonna do some rearranging. Now, you see where the sine cube A is and the minus sine square A is one to factor out a square. So group the sine cube A and the minus sine square A cos A. Then we're gonna have plus the sine A cos square A. Minus cos cube over the denominator. Now from the first two, we can factor out sine square, right? So factor out sine square. Mm -hmm. You left back with sine A. Don't drop off the A. Sine A. You know, make it A squared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You fuck out sine square, you're going to left back with a sine A inside. Sine, a. sine square A times sine A give us sine cube. I'm saying you, you just write sign. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah you leave off the A. Yeah, the A. Yeah. Don't leave off the A. Cost A. Can factor out cos square there. Very good, cos square A. Nice. So, Jamie, what do you notice about the new numerator? Isn't that just the product of two factors? This one. Yeah. All right. So, you can simplify that. You can factorize that even further in the next line. So, put it over the denominator, then factorize it in the next line.
But Jamie, then sine square a plus cos square a, that's what? Sine yeah. square one, very good. Well, yeah, here is the left side, not the right side. Yeah, the left side. No, no, not there. Not. Oh, oh, you just take it off. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, that that's what you mean. Yeah, just put one. Yeah. And then you can break that up now. Good. No, you don't need to look what happened. Don't the signs cancel? You have a sign in the numerator. Look what you're trying to get. The sign A cancel there. And in the other side, the cost cancel. Then you get the answer that it's one over cos a minus one over sine a. That wasn't bad, right? It was tedious, but yeah. tedious. All right, but manageable. All right, no problem. Here's one more to do. All right, so it says prove that one over. One over one plus sine x plus one over one minus sine x equal two over cos square x. Yeah. Good, good, good. All right, so you're going to prove that. Remember, you start with the left hand side. Very good, right on the LCM, first and foremost.
The denominator is what? The difference of two square. That's right. Very good. One square is just one. Very good. Very good. All right. Lovely. All right, Jamie. So now what we're going to be doing now is, well, I want you to solve some questions now related to radiance. All right. So let me give you a nice question here. So quick, take this question down for me now. Two times square X minus tan X minus six equals zero, where X is between zero where x is between zero and two pi. So now you have to give the answers in radians. You sure you want to do that? No. Notice that anytime it looks like you have an x square and an x, start to think about quadratics. Yeah. P, all right, using P, no problem. So it's three and two. Three and two. So you put two P, put your two P and your P first. Yeah, two, two P and P. Signs are different and the bigger number gets the minus. Signs are different, bigger number. Two P, but that would be, let me see, that is three. That's 2p squared. All right, no, so the three would go, three would go to the other side. And then the two go there, but the bigger number gets a negative. So it's a minus sign should be with the three, and a plus with the two. Yeah. That's it. All right, now, Jamie, by the way, do you know how to put your calculator in radians? 
Yes, sir. All right, good. Equal to, not, not equal to. Why are you getting rid of the negative two? No, it's only not valid for sine and cos. Sine and cos. Oh, yeah, for tan, tan, tan is possible for all values. No matter what it is, all right? Only sine and cos is between one and negative one. All right, so that, remember the first part, you only give me one answer, 56.3. Remember, tan is positive in two quadrants. And 56.3 is not radians. I don't want you to give me the answer in degrees. So give me the answer in radians. So change the calculator to radians. And put what, three over two is in radians. Tan inverse three over two in radians. Uh, giving me 0 0.98. Yes, 0 0.98. That's it in radians. 0 0.98. Let's put radians. All right, R A D. Yeah. All right, so that's one answer. Now, in the third quadrant, it's going to be what? It would be I plus. Yes, very good. I'm so happy you didn't say 180 plus. It's pi plus. So pi plus that zero point whatever. This in radians, can you use pi in the calculation? Yeah, use pi, yeah. Very good, 4.12. Very good, pi minus.
right? Very good, very good, Jamie. Very, very, very good. Nice. You can write out all the values for x. All right, no, I wanted, I wanted, let me see, go through maximum, no. All right, I'm gonna give you some other, some other question now, but I'm gonna give you some multiple choice questions. All right, so I want you to write this down for me now. These are popular, they love to ask these. If cos A is equal to three over five and A is acute, what is the value of tan A? To do that for me, Jamie. We have to switch back to degrees. Switch the degrees. Why would you switch the degrees? You want me to give you the multiple choice options answer? Oh, yes. Okay, okay. All right, so if this were to come on a paper too, I wouldn't want you to do this. I wouldn't want you to be taking cost inverse. I want you to remember what does, what is cost? Sign opposite over adjacent or what? What is cos? It's adjacent over hypotenuse. Very good. So draw a triangle for me. So they give you a triangle and they tell you that the angle is E. So put on the angle E. So now it's a right angle, you have the angle E. What is the adjacent? The adjacent, they give you the adjacent. Remember, it's adjacent over hypotenuse. So, what's the adjacent? If cos is three over five, yeah. yeah, the adjacent is three, and what's the hypotenuse? Good. So, then what's tan A? So, now you need to find the opposite. How are you going to find the opposite? You need to know what the opposite is before you can find tan A. You can use Pythagoras. Very good. Pythagoras theorem to find the opposite. Very good, four over three. So the options that they gave on this exam was three over four, four over three, five over three, and minus five over three. And you had the four over three correctly, so that's good. All right, all right, take this down for me. This is the next question. Uh, what is the value of sine x, Bracket around the sine x squared divided by a over a 
puts a bracket after the x. Oh, no, no, after the x. Yeah. Oh, no, uh, it's, it is sine x, then a bracket around sine x, then you square it. Yeah, over a plus cos x, put the bracket around it, then you square it over a. It says, what is the value of that provided A is not zero? One over A, yeah, that's correct, nice. All right, you didn't show any working, but that's fine. All right, factored out the one over A. All right, now, oh, this multiple choice was so sweet. They asked about the question in the reverse. See if tan theta is four over three, what is sine theta? Uh, all right, no problem. All right, here's this question now, Jamie. It says, given that sine K theta equal s what is the value of theta given k and s are positive values where s is between 0 and 1 non inclusive and theta is acute. So what's the value of theta? In other words, they're asking you to make theta the subject. Care. All right, do you want to see the options? Do you want yeah. to see the options and maybe that give you a hint how to start? All right, I'm going to show you the options. Here are the options for A, B, C, and D. All right, so you can go ahead now. It's just worded. All they're doing is just put this question in words just to see if you understand the theory of trigonometry. So go ahead now, share back your screen and finish it. Is having k right there the same as having it as a coefficient? No, no. Coefficient is one. Uh, 
Very good, that's all. It's just the word in make the question seem like it hard, don't it? So. Yeah, they just put the words to just test if you know what's going on in terms of the theory. Very good, Jamie. Very, 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 very good. All right, nice. All right. Me. All right, now I want you to solve this question for me. So it says solve the equation two cos square theta plus cos theta equal to zero, where theta is between zero and pi. Okay. Two, two cos square theta plus cos theta equal to zero, where theta is between zero and pi. I can go to the next page and write this equation for me. These are the two equations to close the day. The next question is two cos square theta over sine square theta plus cos theta equals zero, where theta is between pi and two pi. Yeah. So now this is just practice solving equations in radians. This one is a multiple choice question. Oh no, no, that's a paper two question. Oh. Yeah. Zero and pi, not five, zero and pi. It has between zero and pi. Yeah. So you're gonna solve that equation. Notice that both of them have cos theta in common. Why can't you factor out cos theta? Very good. Now, if that is equal to zero, then either nice. Solve those two equations.
Do you need to go in the next quadrant? They say theta is between what? Zero and pi. Pi so can be. Can't be down there, good. So that's just one answer. So solve the next one now. Very good, kind of down there. So, you know, it's just that one right there. Hi, minus, good. And two over three pi. Very good. All right. The next one. Are you going to solve that equation? The first thing is we don't like fractions. So you need to get rid of the denominator. So multiply through by sine squared theta. Good. Now, what do you notice? You never like an equation with cos and sine, but since you have cos twice, change the sine squared to what? Uh, would be... Yeah, man, no, no, don't be hesitant. Nothing is wrong if you have a cost cube theta. Nice. So what do you notice? It's not a quadratic, but I can... A cubic, yeah. But if you call cost theta G, you notice what? This looks like that's a cubic, yeah. So you can factor out a G, right?
All right. Now remember, I tell you, you never want to have like negative coefficients at the front. So you multiply through by minus one. Yeah. So it's one on one. Now looking at that, can that really be factorized? Uh, we can't factorize that, no. So when you can't factorize it, you're gonna have to use the quadratic formula. Yeah, man, so this one really spicy. This is probably the hardest question I'll see. So look at that now. So that is, I don't know why I put X and not J, but that's fine. All right, so we have now two plus the square root of eight over two or two minus the square root of eight over two. So write down the three values for J now. Remember the first value is J is zero. Yeah, so cos theta is zero or cos theta is two plus square root eight over two or cos theta is two minus square root eight over two. You sure about that? Remember what they say now? They say theater is between what? Yeah, I was just about to cross this one out. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Very good, two pi minus pi by two.
Now, will that have any solution? The next one. No. Because cos theta must be between, between what? 0 and 1. But 2 plus root 8, that's 4 point something over 2. That's 2 point something. Cos theta can't be so much, right? So in that case, you write invalid, or you can say inadmissible. Any way you want, pretty tough. Say that part is not valid. That's going to give you a negative value, right? Mm -hmm. 1.99. How much you got? 1.99. Oh, 1.99. Oh, that's all right. 1.99 radians. Good. That is on the graph there. 1.99 pi is pi is. 3.14. So we're still not in the right quadrant yet. So what are you going to do now to get in the right quadrant? Good, good, good. 2 pi minus. All right. Wonderful. That's good. My two nine radians. Very good, Jimmy. Very good. All right. All right. All right. So we're going to stop here for today. I'm going to show you now. So we have completed now converting between radians and pearl value, meaning the angle in the first quadrant. We know to find secondary angle secondary meaning in the second and third quadrant so next week we're going to look at what's known as general solution and we also know to solve any trig equation of the form sine cos or tan whether it's going to lead to a quadratic whether we have to use sine square plus cos square as long as it's in the form a sine a cos this a tan this we know to solve it we know to evaluate sine, cosine, and tangent of any angle because we can set up for a right angle triangle. So next week, what we're going to do is general solution. We're going to also look at graphs and maximum and minimum. Now, Jamie, once we finish that, next week, we're going to finish trigonometry, right? So what we're going to do is, can you see the calendar on my screen right here? Yeah, I can see all right, now you see this Thursday right here, the 24th, you're going to have a module one mock exam. We're going to finish module one next week. So, of course, you have to get a module one test, don't it? Cool with that? So, what I want you to do is, you know, in the meantime, while we're doing trigonometry, I want you to revise over everything in module one because we're going to place, we're, go, we're going for placing in the Caribbean, you know, so we have to do as much practice as possible. So, you're going to get a mock module one test, and the mock module one test is just every topic that's in module one trigonometry, matrices, sequence series. Remainder and factor theorem, logarithms, everything. It's just a mock test. All right. I'm not sure how much revising is going to be. It's going to be marked out of 50. And you're going to have to do it. So after you do it in one hour, then I'm going to mark your paper on the spot and we go through anything that, you know, anything that you would have seen that maybe you didn't get four marks on. But I'm hoping that we're in the 
high 90. Mid 90s, high 90s for now. All right, so we're going to get a test that is, which day is that? This day, the 24th. All right. So I'm not sure how much revising I can do because my labs are due around that time. But I'll try. Oh, yeah. oh, your labs are due the 24th. So you're not sure if you're going to get to review. Not exactly the 24th, but a bit after that. Yeah. All right. All right, no problem. I understand. No problem. All right, no problem. All right, we're not we're not under any pressure. All right, we can always reschedule. Okay. All right, Jamie. So take care, and see you tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Next week. Remember to 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 um try the Microsoft and get back to me. Sure. All right. All right. Take care. All right. You too, sir.